So he's going to be our first speaker. Give, and uh, he, all right, thank you very much. I thank you for electing me mayor, and, and I and I thank you, and I mean that. I, I enjoy it very much. It's very interesting. It's a lot of work. Uh, as you know, Jeff Orovitz and I were the two newcomers that were elected, and we have now been in office 100 days. And, and so um, I want to tell you a couple of things that have come up in that 100 days. I noticed there is an article in the Arizona Republic today, uh, one of the columnists was talking about how we need some property tax reform because as our values have been going up and we have been paying more taxes, the municipal elected officials have been bragging these last few years about how they have not been raising your taxes because the taxes have been raising themselves by the values going up. And they should have actually been reducing the tax rate to keep things even when values go up. And so the very first night that we took office, very first night, the issue on the agenda is a property tax increase, an increase in the rate. And so uh, Jeff and I, and we got a little help there, we, uh, we uh, fought and kicked. And so the very first thing we were able to do was negate a good part of the proposed property tax increase. We had our council retreat here uh, a month or so ago. And at the council retreat, we are supposed to set our goals for the coming year or two. And again, Jeff and I were able to get some support and get as the number one thing on the agenda for the coming year to focus on the repair and revitalization of our infrastructure, our streets and utilities, and, and do get back to basic core services. And we uh, got some good support for that, and that is on our list. We have a list of about 10 things that we hope to accomplish, but that's uh, number one. Another thing that, that we got on the list that we're going to accomplish, and I am personally interested in this and spearheading this, is pension reform for some of the city employees where the city pays a very high proportion of their pension benefits. And it cannot be sustained. You've seen this uh, maybe mentioned in Phoenix, the Valley Cities. All cities are having the same problem. Some cities are darn near uh, bankrupt because of this, and so we are going to be focusing on pension reform right here in, in Flagstaff. Thank you. And I would like to think that Jeff and I can take credit for this, but on Friday it was announced that Standard and Poor has changed the city's credit rating from negative to at least stable. So, <laughs> and that's because of us, I, I, I'm going to assure you. And then finally, I noticed the headline in the Arizona Republic this morning was again about how Glendale is in serious financial trouble because as a city it has thought that it was a developer. And our city has of course done that in the past years. And I will guarantee you that that has stopped. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I am enjoying my job. The, uh, I figured out the other day my salary and the number of hours I work, I'm almost up to minimum wage. <laughs> and that's all right, because it's, a, it's a really a fun job. So now I'd like to call up my wingman, Jeff Orvitz. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm not going to rehash what we've been doing, but we've been working 
really hard um, trying to make some changes down there at City Hall. And I want to thank all of you guys and people like you around the city who put a couple of fiscal conservatives down at City Hall, which was sorely needed. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of things we still need to push and get changed down there. But we're in the fight now, and we're pushing for changes. So now we keep pushing, though. And uh, there's a lot of candidates you're going to hear from here tonight that I'm supporting and that I hope I can encourage you guys to support as well. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Three months ago, I was a candidate, and it was a long race, about a year. And people told me, you know, don't run as a fiscal conservative. Don't run as a pro-business candidate. In fact, I had people come up to me and they would say, you know, what are you doing? This is Flagstaff. You can't run. You can't hang out with these people. You can't associate with these people. You can't run as a fiscal conservative. So we proved that you can because we were pretty open as to who we are and, and uh, what we wanted to do down there at City Hall. So I hope that when you hear from some of the candidates tonight that you'll consider supporting them like you supported me and like you've supported Mayor Neighbors. You know, we've got some great people running. We've got school board. It'd be great to get some fiscal responsibility on that board. We've got Jared Holland running for school board, um, which I encourage you to, to, to listen to what he's saying and, and hopefully vote for him if you're in this school district. Um, We've got Gary Robbins, who's running for judge, and Gail Dent, who's running for county board of supervisors. These guys, they're running local races, and uh, it can be tough, especially when you're in Flagstaff and tends to be uh, a, little, a little more different than the rest of the state, and that's okay. But having a balance is good, so I encourage you guys to really look into these candidates. And, you know, when, when I ran, they, like I said, they said, you can't win in Flagstaff. It's a liberal town. Don't run. Don't run into you know, the conservative ideals. But we, now we've got some great people who are running for the state legislator who are here tonight, and I encourage you to learn about them as well. They're, we're redistricted into Flagstaff, so it, it's a little different than uh, probably their last race. Brenda Barton, who is, who is here tonight and you're going to hear from, and Bob Thorpe, and Chester Crandell, who's running for state senate against Tom Chabin here, who's, who's not here. Is Tom here? <laughs> so I encourage you, you know, I know so many of you are active and you're out there pushing and pushing and going door to door. Whatever you can do to help. Uh, if, if you can't go door to door, if you can make phone calls, if you can write letters. These people need your help. These people are putting it all out there. And, you know, we don't, we don't do this for the job. As Jerry said, he's maybe making minimum wage. I, I get paid a little less than that, so, you know, you don't do this for the money. We do this as, a, as we're passionate about making changes. So any support you can give these people, even if, if you can't go out, if you got a little money, they need help with that too. So they, you know, they want to bring to the state fiscally conservative, fiscally responsible uh, practices down there. So. We need to do this. We're heading in a direction, as most of you know, that's, that's why you're here. That's why you're involved. We can't keep going on in the direction we're in. We need people who have backgrounds in, 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 in business and private sector. Uh, you know, I've only been down there for three months, and, you know, I, 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 I like my colleagues. I like all of them. I'm not, you know, we, we all have different viewpoints. But part of the problem we have in this country, as you know, is just a disconnect between what's going on in the private sector and what's going on in the government sector. The private sector continues to contract and have trouble and you know we cut back and we cut back but we're not seeing those cutbacks in the government sector and and I've seen tens and I just did a blog today I do one once a week and you know I put out information about what we're spending money on what we're doing and it's it's shocking and if this is going on throughout the country in every city every county uh, it's it's concerning because unfortunately we know money doesn't grow on trees but unfortunately there's a lot of people in office that think money grows on trees and they might believe in a tooth fairy too I don't know so I encourage you to get behind these folks we also have uh, Jonathan Payton who's running for Congress who yeah. is either here or is going to be here and Jeff Flake who's running for the US Senate and I hope I didn't forget anybody <laughs> so I appreciate everyone coming out and just get involved and get out there and push and push and we'll just keep fighting 
And uh, I don't think the battle ever ends. I think it's been our, since our country was founded, you know, we've had this fight between the ever-growing size of government and what they should and shouldn't be involved in. And, and, and the fight continues, and I appreciate everybody's efforts. And let's keep going, and let's get these people elected. Thank you. To bring up Jared Holland, who is uh, running for uh, the Flagstaff Unified School District's Board of Directors. Jared, give him a big hand. Thank you. Thank you for having me this evening. You know, um, I was listening to uh, Mayor Neighbors and, and Councilman or uh, Orovitz talk a little bit about how they're getting paid minimum wage. As a member of the school board, I get zero. So I'm certainly not going to be doing this for the money. I'm an attorney. I can make a lot of money doing something else, robbing somebody else. So actually, as I was thinking about what I was going to say tonight, I thought, you know, the school board is often small, or at least looked at as something that is really small or insignificant or something that's not going to make a whole lot of difference out there. But then I got an email from a uh, Daily Sun reporter who said, we would like to get the candidate's view on the following issues. Proposition 204, the bond issue that's coming up this election. We also want to know about the balanced calendar that... Uh, um, Barbara Hickman, our superintendent, said would cost another $500,000 to implement. We also want to know what, what your thoughts are about closing schools, about the fiscal budget, and so on. And I thought, this is crazy. We've got all sorts of big issues that are coming up in this election, as well as throughout the coming years, that are going to be huge and make a huge effect on all of us both financially as well as the future of our children and the education they're going to get. So am I changing the world? Yes, I believe I am. Why? Because we're dealing with our kids here and the education that they're going to get. And there's a, a very serious balance that needs to come into play with the fi finances as well as the quality of education out there. So my, my purpose in running is, is real simple. I have five little girls at home all of which go to a public school and look for opportunities to learn. They go to the best school I can send them to because I moved to an area of town that looks, looks for the best type of teachers and looks for parental involvement. Do we need larger amounts of money to replace things like a, a, uh, a stadium full of chairs that still work? Not in a recession. Do we need to be able to balance our budget and quit taking out large amounts of money? You betcha we do. And so that's what I'm doing. There isn't a soul on the school board who is conservative, at least from my opinion at this point. Oh. And so I'm there to try and bring a little bit more of a balance out there. And I apologize if people couldn't hear me earlier. That's what I'm running for. I'm running for the future of five little girls and for our future and the future of our children. And I sure appreciate your vote. Thank you. Here. <laughs> At this time, we'd like to introduce uh, Gary Robbins, who is, you, who is running for judge of Division 5, correct? Yes. Hi. My name is Gary Robbins. I'm running for Superior Court Judge Division 5. We've got four points. Number one, why am I running? Well, perhaps you remember the story of a sitting judge who was knocked off the ballot because his opponent complained that his paperwork weren't, wasn't right. What happened in this case was that she had run, she had five times before in 2010 sought to become a judge. She was rejected by the governor three times. She was rejected by the voters. And then she was rejected by the sitting judges who know her best. And she apparently decided that the only way she could become a Superior Court judge was to run unopposed. She had a surprise. And the surprise was that the voters in this county saw, had a writing campaign and wrote me in. Thank you very much. Yay. Secondly, I have unique experience to bring to the court. The experience I have is I've been a judge, I've been an attorney for 30 years. I've been an attorney, excuse me, I've been an attorney for 35 years. I've been in juvenile court and 
in family court for 30 years, and before that I was in appellate court for two years. I have not been doing traffic tickets for the last two years. I'm sorry. Or for the last several years. So I haven't been doing traffic tickets. I haven't been uh, managing misdemeanors. I haven't been doing reading a script. Ah, there it goes. Reading a script for doing for the processing of felony cases. Instead, I've been going and representing families. And the type of work I've been doing is in family court where people are going through the worst year of their life. And for the years before that, I represented literally hundreds of abused, neglected children in juvenile court. That's the experience I have. Now, the third point is, what's the need of the court? Yesterday, it was announced amongst attorneys that what's going to happen now is that they're going to be rebalancing the court to have another division handling divorce cases. What does that mean? Well, they need judges who have that experience. Most of the judges are prosecutors. I'm not a prosecutor. I'm a family law attorney, and I've got that, bat that experience. My opponent, no family law experience. Very little juvenile court experience. I've got, I can fit this situation. Fourth, I support um, Veterans Court. Veterans Court was an idea that Judge Lodge brought into fruition. It needs to be supported. Our veterans supported us. They did a job, a tough job. Many of them are in great shape. Some of them aren't. We need to help them, and we need to care for them. So in, thank you so much. If you're a vet, thank you for your service. So in return, I saw a wrong that had to be righted of knocking out a, a sitting judge. I have 30 years of experience in the Superior Court, in juvenile and family court, which is tough work because you're dealing with people in the worst year of their lives. That is an area which needs to be dealt with and needs to be addressed in the Superior, in the Judiciary because most of the people don't have that experience. My opponent does not have that experience. And finally, I want to continue just Veterans Court and have it serve our vets for the service that they gave to us. Thank you. Gail Dent, who is uh, running for Coconino County Board of Supervisors, District 1, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Gail. Thank you. Well, the people who spoke for me before me um, gave you a heads up. I want to talk about community spirit. You have a chance here tonight as a rally, as speakers, to make a difference. To make a difference come November. It's not about me. It's about we. What we can do together. What we can do in changing the status quo. How are we going to do it? Vote in November and knock out the dang blue. Let's bring in some white, independent over here, but very red in my household because my husband is a very strong Republican, and I promise the Republican Women's Committee I will switch to their party the moment I am elected. I take great pride in this country. I take great pride in my homestead, in the work that I have done in the past 11 years of serving over 137,000 families throughout northern Arizona, not just Coconino County. I am the director, founder, and financer of Angels Corner Incorporated. My website is gaildent.com. Go to it. Read about me. I am a non-attorney advocate. I have been sanctioned by the Bar Association because I help too many people in the courts. I was doing the right thing. Uh -huh. On the other side of the coin, I've been to Washington three times, compliments of Arizona Farm Bureau, where we have lobbied unpaid to get their legislators to hear us on issues that are dear to all of us. Our jobs, our agricultural base, development of incomes in this country, but better yet, here in Arizona. I've been to the Arizona State Capitol at least a dozen times with the Arizona Farm Bureau and I can count nine more times on my issues trying to get them to hear me on issues that we have here of poverty, homelessness, joblessness, and reintroduction of individuals who are a part of the good old boys. I want to get rid of the dang things. I'm sorry, I'm Frank. 
I'm straight up. I'm a cut off the grass of a Blackfoot family and Irish. I'm a half breed. Put it that way. Uh, I don't do things simple. I'll do things honestly. I will be available. And if you've got an issue, let's find a solution to it. I've offered solutions to the county supervisors in the past. And they don't think transit really is an issue for the rural outlying areas. I'm sorry, I don't care if you have a $100,000 home or a $5,000 piece of land or a $200,000 income bracket that you're living, that you got all of this for you. You all have the same vote. You all have one vote, one voice. Your money is not going to buy my vote. What's going to make a difference is how we affect our brothers and sisters. And that's the community spirit. That's what's changing in America. No more big government controlling what you do with your land, your money, your rights, and your backyard. If you want to have a dog that's halfway decent and good with other animals, then you can have them. You want to raise chickens? You raise those chickens. Do you know what the economic cliff that we're coming to in January is going to do? If half of you don't know how to have food storage or how to be a prepper or have the means to put some money away for that dark moment when it comes, and it's coming, it's coming. We're going to have more people at St. Mary's Food Bank, which I was a part of for over nine years, and they dropped us because we served too many families. I'm still doing my food bank. It's Angel's Corner, Inc. I'm not boasting. I'm factual. I've, you got a problem? Tell me about it. I'll find you a solution. I've got over 1,500 resources, and none of us are paid. Now, the good mayor is taking less than minimum wage, and Mr. Orbitz, God bless his soul, he's working his heart out, too. Well, the board of supervisors all get paid too much. And I'd like to see a big chunk of that given back to some of the community services that should be funded. Basically the seniors and maybe a transportation program. I don't need their money. I need their power to make a difference for all of you. And it can happen. It will happen. I've got a little card I'm going to read to you and I'm shaking in my knees. I'll tell you that right now. So you're getting the true me, okay? Community spirit. A genuine consideration for others fosters an eagerness to sacrifice personal interests and glory for the betterment of others. It's not about I, it's about we, and you're the we, all of you. You're here because you care about what the future is in Coconino County, for the state of Arizona, for the United States of America. And don't stop, don't stop. God bless all of you because every one of you will pass on something to another individual and it starts now. This next month, it's push and shove and let people know that we give a damn. And we're not sitting back on our haunches. My name is Gail Dent. Put a dent in the county government. Thank you. To uh, bring up a person that uh, a lot of you know personally because he's been involved with our tea party for the last couple of years, uh, Mr. Bob Thorpe, who is running for the state House of Representatives, District 6. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you, Bob. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> At the end of the convention, as, as the delegates were walking out, a woman in the crowd said, Dr. Franklin, what do we have? A republic or a monarchy? He replied, Madam, we have a republic if you choose to keep it. So my question to each and every one of you, are you interested in keeping our republic? And what will you do to keep it? You need to talk to your neighbors. You need to talk to your friends. You need to talk to your relatives. You need to ensure that these people understand the issues. That they are going to mail in their ballot. That they are going to show up at the polling place. We have an opportunity to change things. There's oftentimes in history you don't get too many opportunities, especially repeat opportunities. We 
been living through a disaster for the last four years. This gentleman, I'll use that politely, this gentleman in the White House has no credentials for being the President of the United States. He does not have presidential character. He does not have respect for our Constitution. He needs to be replaced. I know that there's some folks out here in the audience, and, and maybe you know people, that aren't terribly thrilled about Obama. I'm certainly not. But I know of some folks that are not even thrilled about Romney. And, and they might even stay home and not vote. I would vote for this shoe before I'd vote for Mr. Obama. Yeah. Hey. And this shoe would probably do a better job. It's, it's kind of interesting. My running mate and I, uh, we're trying to be painted as radicals. That's, that's the best that Democrats can come up with, that we're some kind of radicals. Probably being here today means I'm some kind of radical. All right. Yay. If loving my constitution means I'm a radical, then great. So be it. If being proud of our heritage as a nation and our founding fathers makes me a radical, then great. If being associated with folks like you makes me a radical, then great. I, I, I wear that, bra that badge proudly. I, I'm fortunate enough, I was asked to run uh, with uh, Brenda Barton and with uh, Chester Crandall. We're a team running for the state legislature. We're constitutionalists. The uh, Arizona Republic would like to paint us with the picture or with, uh, the paintbrush saying that we're kooks. Well, I'm fine with being a kook for the Constitution. That works for me. Yeah, right. We're interested in making sure that we have a constitutional government here in Arizona and that we keep our state a red state. Yes. We're also interested in limited government, low taxes, yes. low energy prices, yes. terrific job creation. Yes. We want jobs to come from other states. We want companies to move to Arizona and bring their jobs with them and allow our Arizona people to work at those companies. We want to lead the nation. It is my hope that we can also lead the nation by passing some laws that push, pushes our, our state back to the original ideals that our founders gave us as a constitutional state, a sovereign state. Some of the things I would like to encourage you, we're, we're having a general election coming up and of course I'd love to have your vote. But there are other important things that you need to be voting on. Of course, a no-brainer. We need to get rid of this Obama guy and his cronies. That's one. But there are other important things on the ballot that I'd just like to talk about for a second. One, Brenda and Chester actually helped get a, a proposition on the ballot called 120. And it's pretty simple. It declares that the state of Arizona is a sovereign state. Yes. Yes. That we have sovereignty over our land, over our air, over our minerals, and over our water. Yes. In Arizona, we like to uh, joke around that whiskey is for drinking and water is for fighting over. We need to protect our water rights, and the government, uh, especially the EPA, would like to do whatever they can to take those water rights away from us and, and tell us how we can use them or how we cannot use them. So, Proposition 120, please support that. Tell your friends and neighbors it's not a kooky idea. It's, it's pushing us back towards what our founders wanted us to be as a sovereign state. Our, our federal government was created by the states. Our constitution was created by the states. The federal government would like you to believe otherwise. Two other propositions I'd like you to be aware of. Proposition 204 would like you to uh, have just one penny, one single penny added to each dollar that you spend as far as your sales tax goes. Only one single penny. 
Well, when when the legislature and our governor uh, signed this emergency increase in our sales tax, it was temporary, and it was made clear that it would be temporary. It expire it expires in May. This other group would like to have you have a permanent, for all time, increase in our sales tax, which accounts for about $1 billion a year, taken out of the back pockets of working Arizona families, to be spent the way that this group wants to spend it. They'd like to claim that it's for the kids, and I get a tear in my eye every time I say that. They'd like to claim it's for the kids and for education. Don't believe them. When the construction trade in Arizona spent millions of dollars to get this proposition on the ballot, there's, there's big money involved. So please, we cannot afford to add to our Constitution a $1 billion or larger increase in our sales tax for working Arizona families. We cannot afford it. We would be second in the nation as far as the highest sales tax in the nation if, if this passes. We need to defeat it. Lastly, what is, I, I apologize, I can't remember right now. What is the prime or the jungle primary? Which 121. 121 has to be killed. This was a, a proposition, it's called the jungle primary. Basically, it kind of eliminates the, the primary system that we have right now. So you might find yourself in a situation when the general election comes, if you wanted to vote Republican, and you might not be able to, and you'd only have a Democrats to vote for. It's actually backfired in some of the early states that passed it, in Washington and California, uh, when uh, Republicans were the only ones on the ballot. And, and the Democrats, of course, are the ones that actually want this passed because they think it's to their advantage. So that one needs to be killed as well. So just to recap, the one and most important thing, each and every one of you needs to get involved. You need to talk to folks. You need to tell them proudly what you believe in the greatness of our nation and what you believe at the, at the voting booth as well. You need to encourage folks to make sure that they get out and vote because that's the way we take back our nation. Other nations, violence, blood, loss of life. Here we have a peaceful transition uh, when we vote, but we need to make sure that we vote. I am your, I'm your local Flagstaff guy running for the state, and I, I sure appreciate your vote, and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Martin come up, who is uh, Bob's running mate in the uh, Arizona State House of Representatives, District 6, right? Yeah. Give her a big hand. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous to be here. All the great folks from Flagstaff. This uh, morning we were in People's Valley with some more great people at the Cattlemen's uh, Sale. And uh, just uh, jump in the vehicle and get ourselves right on over here to be in Flagstaff. And it was, was great over there. It is true that uh, I'm an incumbent, and uh, with redistricting, now the Flagstaff area and uh, Verde Valley and all those areas now are part of District 6. It's, uh, it's getting to know you guys out here, and uh, you getting to know us. And uh, I've, it's been a lot of fun, and I've appreciated meeting a lot of you already. Born in America. Born with the divine hand of providence upon our country, America was born to establish from the myths of history the concepts of God-given inalienable rights. Not man-made rights that can be taken away by the government, but rights given by our Creator. Americans have a birthright, unique in all the world. The birthright of free choice autonomy, freedom to worship, and liberty. America has produced a new breed of citizen. The risk taker, the dreamers, the thinkers, the builders of new country, of a new country, tamers of a wild and free continent. 
among the natural rights held fiercely by the early colonists and patriots. The right to life, liberty, and the right of property. These came bundled together with the right to defend the nat natural rights that we are given. America has changed. To borrow a phrase familiar to many Christians, America has left her first love, the love of independence, self-reliance, and the love of liberty, looking to government. As Americans, true to our heritage, we must be born again to the liberty to renew the blessings of divine providence, who, whole, who brings the dead to life and at whose command brings into being what did not exist, a rebirth, a falling in love again with our independent, self-reliant liberty. We must be born again, turning away from those habits that have brought us dependence on an all-powerful and consuming national government. America must once again perform the work of liberty, God-serving people. There will be no refuge, no place of safety in all the world if this light of liberty goes out in America. Our forefathers fled the old world and began a renewal of life and liberty in the new world. If we fail, if we are not reborn as Americans full of promise of our heritage, then where shall we go? Where shall we go? Are we to bring the old world to these shores? Look at the old world. Look at Europe today. Is that the future we wish to bequeath upon our children? No. I say no. Let us be reborn to true, liberty-loving Americans. Yes. Each generation must reaffirm in word and deed, in action, to their independence, to their liberty, to their freedom. We must return to the hard work of declaring our independence from the suffocating all-powerful government. We must once again throw off the yoke of indenture and debt. The remedy for America today is found in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, and many of you can quote this. <coughs> if a people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their trespass and will heal their land. Can we continue to ignore discussing religion and politics? as we have for the past half century? No. Look where it has brought us. Can we continue being a society of instant gratification, following the latest trends and fads? Can we continue letting someone else raise our children? We must once again, with a firm reliance on our protection of divine providence, pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Do we think this great liberty, the heritage of America, would cost us any less? Do we think sitting on the sidelines being self-absorbed with thousands of silly trivialities that we occupy our day in and day out? We must be born again as liberty-loving Americans turning away from that which has, for the past 75 years, brought us to this place. Our founders made that pledge with firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. First and foremost, they did pledge their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor. With such devotion and dedication, consideration of the death 
which they would suffer if their cause of freedom and independence in America did not succeed. They did make that, they did not take that statement lightly. They knew that they would hang them. Therefore, I call upon each and every one of you to consider how being reborn in America as a self-reliant, independent, creative, compassionate, and how your part, how your pledge will bring our great nation back to the path our founders set her upon more than 234 years ago. The fire of liberty must burn in our hearts every day. As we are at the crossroads right now, choose carefully from the White House to the State House. Choose carefully. God bless you all. Choose liberty. To speak tonight uh, is our candidate for the Arizona State Senate, District 6, Mr. Chester Crandall. Let's give him a big hand. Oh, sure. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna... If you guys will stand by, we're going to change, change microphones real, uh, real fast here because I think this one's running out of battery. Testing. Ooh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, thank you for assembling. Uh, great group here today. Uh, I want you to know I'm just a plain old country boy and and uh, love to have the opportunity to represent such fine people in the city of Flagstaff. My wife and I live in Heber. Uh, we were redistricted in. I uh, served one term with Brenda in the, in the House of Representatives, and now I'm running for the State Senate. Back in uh, a long time ago, before any of us were here, there was a great event that took place. Back July 4th, 1776. There was a great declaration that was made to the world. Not just to England, but to the world. That there are sometimes governments become so oppressive that we have to use whatever means necessary in order to overcome that oppression. And that led to the great revolutionary war that made this country free. Well, I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as I read the paper and as I look at the things that are happening in this great nation today, we are at that crossroad. Are we ready to stand up as our founding fathers and declare our independence from the overreaching, overpowerful, overgrown federal government that is reaching to take our rights here in the state of Arizona. There were town meetings just like this. Town meetings where people got together and listened to the value of being able to own property of being able to govern themselves and to be able to take responsibility for the things that they needed to do. A famous writer once said, these are the times that try men's soul. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the times that try men's soul. And what are we going to do? Are we going to sit back and continue to allow the federal government the overreach of all the federal agencies that have been put into place that reach into our pocketbook, that reach into our private property rights, that reach into our lives in making decisions, or are we going to fight back and make a change? Not with gun, however some people would think that would be the way to go, but we have the right to vote. We have the right to change this government and to make it the way we want to by electing the people that are going to stand for our rights that we believe are the most important. The right to life, the right to freedoms, the right to private property, the right to do 
what we want to do and to be free. We need to get back to the basics that our founding fathers gave their life, their fortunes, and all that we may be able to stand today, to be able to assemble, and to be able to vote for those that are going to represent us in the manner that we want. Now Bob talked a little bit about some propositions that we're going. And I can tell you in my opinion, and I'm a, I'm a real conservative guy, I'm a states rights person. I think the states created the federal government. The fact is I know they created the federal government. Do you ever wonder why every state in the United States has its own constitution? If the federal constitution was supreme, then why does every other state have a constitution? We need to defend that constitution to the best we can. You know, I spent two years down at the state legislature, and there was not one bill, not one bill, that we ever passed or ever sent through the House that did not go through the process, is this constitutional? Not one time did I say, is, does it go along with the Arizona Constitution? It was always the federal Constitution. But in reality, all of the bills that the, the Congress is passing should come to each state and we should decide whether those bills are constitutional or not and it fits with the Arizona Constitution. That's what we need to be looking at. Bob mentioned Prop 120. And you're going to hear from the opposition and it's going to start coming out on the radio and it's going to start coming out that uh, what this bill does is is going to privatize all of the federal lands we have in the state of Arizona. Not true. Nothing in that bill says anything about privatizing anything. It simply says that we should have the right to manage our resources within our state. Now, let me tell you, and you're going to hear the question, well, we don't have the funds. Uh, even the governor is saying that. We don't have the funds to manage uh, the property and the, and the things in the state of Arizona. Did you know that the mining industry in the United States, not just in Arizona, but pays the federal government $9 billion a year in royalties for mining. Why isn't part of that money staying in the state of Arizona to be able to help us do what we need to do to relieve you of all the taxes that we have to pay? That's why it's important. Another reason, safety. We have wilderness areas in the, in the state of Arizona. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I have no problem with the wilderness areas. But there's, an, there's a wilderness area along the southern border. And the drug cartel continues to come through that wilderness area. And did you know that the Border Patrol cannot go into that wilderness area to patrol that? And so we have foreigners coming across at will and we can't patrol it. Is that right? No. Do we need to do something about it? Yes. Let's pass 120. And that will give us the opportunity then to start to fight back and to manage those things that we need. Don't listen to those, the Sierra Club, and I will call them out. Don't listen to the Sierra Club and some of the others that are saying all we want to do is to dirty the air, dirty the water, and sell all this beautiful property that we have surrounding us. Not so. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, it is time that we stand for the state of Arizona and put the federal government where it belongs in answering to each of the states of the United States. Thank you. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. I just want to thank you all for getting off the couch, coming out here tonight, and listening to what all these wonderful speakers have to say. And uh, the Tea Party, along with the Coconino Get Out the Vote Committee, have put this together so that we can ask people to get out there, register to vote if you haven't already. There's a table over there. Uh, get your neighbors and friends off the couch. This is an important election, as you all know. You wouldn't be here tonight. So I know that I'm preaching to the choir. But uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting this. Uh, we should have the Tea Party Express here uh, pretty soon. And we hope you uh, get to learn more. I'd like to encourage you to visit our website. 
if you want to know more about the Tea Party. There's a booth over there with some flyers with our website information and what we stand for. We as a, as a Tea Party here in Flag don't endorse a particular candidate as such. We endorse candidates who stand for our core values, which is fiscal responsibility, constitutional government, and free markets. And if we have candidates who back that up and live that, that core value, then we're behind them and we want to support them. And tonight we have many of them with us sitting here in the audience and some to thank graciously for what they've done for us in the legislature the last few years. But anyway, thank you guys for making it out here and uh, we hope you enjoy it tonight. We hope you get something out of this and please, you're welcome to our meetings. We meet the first Monday and third Monday of every month at the Radisson Hotel at 6 o'clock. Our programs are set up to be educational. We want to get you informed on as many things as, as we can. We've had constitutional class studies. We've invited people from every branch of government to come out and talk about what their branch does and how it operates. We want to educate you. We want to educate everybody that wants to get out there and learn something. So please, come on out there. Um, I got to tell you, donations tonight are welcome. Uh, it'll help us pay our expense for the event, and it also helps us get more material to bring in and uh, provide to you people and the people on the web. So if you can help us out, I really want to thank you tonight. And those of you who've already donated, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Richard, of the uh, Coconino County Republican. Party, <laughs> Diana Arn. <laughs> okay, it's a party, right? This is a party. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I, as uh, Ed said, I'm Diana Arndt. I'm the chair of the Coconino County Republican Party. want to thank you all for being here and uh, want to just uh, ask one question. Is there anybody here that wants four more years of Obama? No. No. Okay. Okay. And how are we going to prevent that? You are going to get out to vote. And if you do not color that oval in front of Romney's name, then you are supporting Obama. And I want to be real clear about that. It's one or the other. Yeah. Take sides. What I want to also explain about tonight is this event is a get out the vote committee event. This is a collaborative effort of the Flagstaff Tea Party, the Flagstaff Republican Women, and the Coconino County Republican Party. And we have been working great together in the get out the vote effort. We also have the college Republican kids. Yay. I'm sorry you're not kids anymore. <laughs> and we have been hard at work. We have in two weeks made over 7,000 phone calls to people in Coconino County. Every Saturday we walk precincts and knock on doors. We have hung over 2,000 bags that have candidate information. It has information about the propositions, which I encourage you to get. We have recommendations about how to vote, and that's over in the corner at the Coconino County Republican table. Take that to the poll with you. And please be reminded, the last day to register to vote for this election is October 8th. That is right around the corner. So if there's anyone in the middle out there, you can change to be Republican by October 8th. And early ballots will start arriving around October 11th. So look for those in your mail. 40% of the people in our county, in Coconino, vote early ballot. You vote at home. You get your ballot at home. So much of this election is decided among the early ballot voters. They just what? Early ballots are absentee ballots. Yeah, and you get those at home. So be sure to get that filled out and get it in as soon as you can. And we have early ballot forms here as well as voter registration forms um, at the table this way. 
and we will get that to the county for you. If you're already registered and you just want to be an early voter, we have forms that are real quick to fill out as well. So we can help you with that. So I encourage you, even take some with you. Maybe your neighbors would like them as well. Just, I'll come back to you, okay? I just want to be quick and wrap this up and, um, and let the next speaker uh, have her turn. But again, I want to thank Lavelle McCoy for letting us have his facility here. It's just really great. Thank you so much for your turnout. Good night, everyone. That's the wrong greeting. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Well, welcome everybody to the Tea Party Express bus tour. I love it when this thing rolls through town. Yeah. Well, I am here to preach to the choir about not preaching to the choir. I'm here to motivate all of you to get involved and start doing some serious phone banking. So the question is, how many of you love doing phone banking? Yay! Raise your hand if you love phone banking. Yay! I think I saw all of three hands. And this, there's more than three. Okay, how many of you don't really like phone banking? All right. You know why you don't like phone banking? Because you're an American. Right? You like success. Can you guys all hear me? Yeah. All right. You guys like success, right? You don't like to fail at it. You don't like to have people hang up on the phone, right? You want to reach real human beings. Well, guess what? We're going to help you. How many of you know who the greatest, who had the best batting average, career batting average, Major League history? Anybody know? Ted was uh, best, best uh, season. Rogers Hornsby. Close. Rogers Hornsby's number two. Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb had a 366. Your buddy uh, Roger Hornsby had a 358. Does anybody know what a 358 or 366 means? Yes. Yes. That means that out of a thousand balls that came across that plate, the greatest hitter in history only hit 366. Do you have any idea how much money you're making in the major leagues right now if you can bat 300, if you can hit three out of ten balls coming across your plate? You're making a ton of money. You're making more money than you know what to do with. So if you phone bank with us, you're going to be batting 300. Out of the ten phone calls that you actually pick up when the music stops, it's the most amazingly simple system you'll ever use. Out of the ten calls that actually pick up, five of them will hang up on you immediately. Two of them will probably say something kind of grumpy. Now, you guys are all kids here. I don't know if you've ever heard the F word, but you might hear that. But the whole point is, someone is going to say, please don't call me again. And you're going to say, thank you very much, sorry. And you're going to hang up. So five will hang up immediately, two of them are going to say something to you, and you're going to find out if that person is male or female. And you're going to have to guess sometimes. If they're a baritone or a tenor, probably male, right? Soprano alto, probably female, right? That's important information that goes right back into our database. Hugely important to get that. Next thing, you're going to talk to three more people. One of those people and here's the question. How many of you like to take long surveys? Okay, one person. We have a one question survey. And it's a very simple question. Has Provid have President Obama's policies helped the Arizona economy? Or have they hurt the Arizona economy? All right, because you're the choir. The people we're calling, you're not going to get the right answer every time. But if someone tells you, I believe that President Obama's policies have, I think, on, I think they probably help the economy. If a person tells you that, you have learned all you need to know about that person. We will never call them again. There's no point in calling that person ever again. All right? Now, if the person says, and a lot of them will, they'll say, what do you mean Obama's policies hurt Arizona? They hurt the whole country. 
Ah. All right. Now you know, learned everything you need to know about that person. That person understands economics. They understand the basic way the world works. We do not need to call that person ever again. And then there's a bunch of people you're going to talk to, and it's going to be a little strange for you because there are people who have not actually made up their minds. When you call some of these folks, they will actually not know. They will be undecided about whether Obama's policies have helped or hurt this economy. We need to come back over that target a whole bunch of times. We need to call those people again, and we need to take door hangers to their, to their doors, and we need to take our tablets there and interview those people because we need to find out what makes them tick. Because these are people who can be reached. So this is all you do with the phone bank. It's incredibly simple. It's incredibly fun, actually. Our organization will come out to where you are. We will throw a party. We will buy food. How many of you like pizza and soda pop? How many of you are more like the, you know, the salmon and quinoa and kale? Yeah, I know, Joy. You're the salmon and quinoa and, and, and kale salad kind of people. Okay, we will buy you, Joy, we will buy you salmon and quinoa and kale salad. We don't care as long as you put ten people in that room and you call for two or three hours. And we'll try to make it as absolutely fun as we can make it. It's incredibly simple and fun. We'd love to support your local organization too, uh, give you help in doing your activities, things you want to do. We'll go anywhere in Arizona to make sure we're phone banking with you guys. So please talk to Judy. Please talk to Judy. She has sign-up sheets for the phone banking. She's also going to come up here. We also have Karen will come up here. We really, really need to make sure that we understand who in this country is really on the fence about the big issues. It's very important. It's important for the short run. It's important for the long run. Our mission is educating people about what's going on in this country. And uh, people who are educated start to make better decisions. Why are we talking to people right now? Think about it for a second. These undecided people who haven't made up their minds about whether they think what's going on in the economy. Why are those people even willing to listen? Why do they pick up the phone when you phone bank? You know why? Because they are about to have dinner with their Uncle Ted next week. And their Uncle Ted is going to ask them, one, who they're voting for, and two, why? And they've got to come up with an answer. So all these independent, moderate, People in the middle who have not educated themselves, they are reaching out right now to try to figure out what in the world's going on. And you'd think it's because they really want to know who to vote for, but in many cases it's just because they don't want to be embarrassed when Uncle Ted asks them who they're voting for. Whatever. This is a narrow window of opportunity when you and I have a chance to talk to people who are not the choir. So we need to get out there and make sure we're phone banking with these people. We need to make sure we're actually educating your fellow citizens about what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah. How many of you don't like phone banking? We went through that. How many of you don't really like it? How many of you are willing to give it a try? If Joy sets up a phone bank right here in Flagstaff, how many of you are willing to come over and get some free food? How many of you want pizza? As a How many of you want pizza? How many of you want salmon? Okay, tell us what you want, we'll get it for you. All right, thank you very much. I'm Tom Jenny, I'm with America's Prosperity. You can find us on the web uh, at failingagenda.com. That's our Obama website, failingagenda.com. You can also find us at americansforprosperity.org. Uh, you can find us at aztaxpayers.org. If you get out Google and type in Americans for Prosperity, you'll find out that Mr. Obama doesn't really like us, uh, but you'll also find our website. Please contact us. Please get on Judy's sign-up sheet. Thank you all for trying to save this country. Good night. I don't know. Is this yours? You want me to, you want to take No, no, it's on my microphone. Okay. <laughs> you need this? You want... Um, yeah, we'll okay. okay. At this time, we'd like to welcome our candidate, or the candidate for... Uh, Con Congressional District 1, Mr. Jonathan Payton. Let's give him a big hand. Are you all, are you all fired up? Yeah. Are you fired up? You should be because today is the day we begin to take this country back. My name is Jonathan Payton. 
and I'm the guy who's going to beat Ann Kirkpatrick in November. We've got a, a tracker here from the Democratic Make sure you, you greet them before you leave today. They follow me around everywhere. I want to tell you a little story. Everyone asked me, where did you get your political philosophy? Where was that, where was that born? I grew up in, here in Arizona, and I had a, a dream that all I wanted to do was see the world. So I got the chance to go overseas to go to what was then West Germany as an exchange student when I was 18 years old. And that was 1989-1990. That was a pretty important moment in, American, in, in world history and in German history. Because that was the year that the Berlin Wall collapsed. And I remember this very well. The day that the wall fell, the West German government gave every single East German citizen 100 Deutschmarks, and they came through. Our little town was only about 1,400 people. There was a neighboring town, about 23,000 people. We had 50,000 visitors in one weekend. And they took everything that they possibly, they bought everything that they could, all the things that they couldn't get when they were in East Germany. And they had bags of pineapples, chocolate, meat, toilet paper, whatever was scarce in East Germany. And I learned German, or I learned Russian at the high school that I, I went to in, in uh, Tucson, Arizona. And I saw in the middle of the square, there was a young man. And that young man was, was wearing a great coat of a Russian soldier. And I went up to him and I talked to him and I, we talked in Russian and he told me that he came over with this huge wave of East German citizens. His job was to guard the East German border. And I said to him, you're going to have quite the story when you go back to Mother Russia. And he said, I'm not going back. He said, I'm going to keep going east until I see the Pacific Ocean and then I know I'll be free. Of course, then he would be in California, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> the reason why that young man wanted to come to the United States, the reason why he wanted to go west, is because he knew that this is the greatest country in the world, and it's not great just because of our military, it's not great just because of our economy. It is great because of the liberties guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. But you look around and you see what's happening in this nation today. And that country that that young man wanted to go to, slowly but surely, it is becoming unrecognizable to him and unrecognizable to ourselves. I want you to think about a moment what things would be like if we had not been so successful in 2010, what this country would be like. That is what is at stake, ladies and gentlemen. That is why we need a new president. That is why we need a new Senate. And that is why I want to win this race to represent you in the United States Congress. It is a stark choice that we're left with. I want you to think about what they promised when they ran way back, when they finally took over the House and they took over the Senate and they took over, eventually, the presidency. They promised that they were going to give us health care. Instead, they gave us health care rationing. They promised that they were going to give us, or they were going to secure our border. Instead, they, su they sued this state. They said this president promised that he was going to Im improve our reputation in the Middle East, and instead they are attacking our embassy with impunity in Libya today. But most of all, there's the big three. Obamacare, the stimulus, and fast and furious. These three things, these three issues have become a scandal in this country. 
a scandal that has become a cause, a cause that has become a movement and a movement. You mark my words on the first Tuesday in November will shake the very foundations in Washington, D.C. like we have not seen in a generation. Yes. At this nation's founding, at the Virginia ratification of the Constitution, they said, we do not well, we, we, are free, we fear that our liberties will belong to one particular branch of government. We need one branch to be a check on the other. What they meant was they did not want to have a rubber stamp. And yet, in this city, Ann Kirkpatrick told Progressive Radio that when asked if she, what she thought of President Obama, she said, I don't want to second guess the president. That is not what our founders wanted, ladies and gentlemen. They wanted to have a check and a balance. When it comes to the issues of raising taxes, was she a check and a balance or was she a rubber stamp? When it came to the issue of the stimulus, was she a check and a balance or was she a rubber stamp? When it came to the issue of Obamacare, was she a check and a balance or was she a rubber stamp? She was a rubber stamp and we need a check and a balance in Congress to watch any president who is going to be in the executive branch. That's why you have a Congress. That's what our founders wanted. I want you to think for a moment, the two years that she was in office, what happened? February 2009, the stimulus was passed. You go on to March 2009, car check. June 2009, cap and trade. June 2009, cash for clunkers. March 2010, Obamacare. March 2010, Rob Prince is killed on our southern border. June 2010, you have Dodd-Frank. In September 2010, you have the reauthorization of the bailouts. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a simple list of bills. That's not even a record. That is a sustained assault on the Constitution of the United States by Ann Kirkpatrick, Nancy Pelosi, and Barack Obama in the White House. Now you all know what happened in Holbrook. You know that she had a town hall. And we are going to be having ads, I'll tell you that right now. You know what happened in Holbrook. You remember how she left that town hall of normal people, everyday people, seniors, asking her what her position was going to be on health care and what did she do? She ran out on those constituents. She got inside that car with California plates and she took off never to return. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a combat veteran. I've never walked away from a fight in my life. And I'll tell you this, I'll make you this promise. I will never walk out on a town hall, I'll never walk out on Arizona, and I'll never walk out on you. For those of you who know me, you know I've served in the legislature, you know I've served in Iraq, you know I've served as an officer in the Army. Those of you who know me, you know I will fight and I'll do everything I can to stand up for this district. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Payton, and if you give me the chance, I want to help you take this country back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. Get on? Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Is everybody getting excited? All right, here's the story. The big stage is over there. So what I need for everybody to do is pick up, stand up, get some blood in your legs, pick up your chairs, and move them over towards the stage. We have a couple of people over there that's going to show you where to start setting them up. Then our final speaker is going to be from that stage. So if you get moved as soon as possible, we'll get the next speaker going. I truly appreciate each and every one of you being here. I was just talking to uh, a lady and gentleman a moment ago and I asked, asked about their perspective and they basically said it's time for the silent majority to be silent no more. It's time for us to make a ruckus, 
It's time for us to tell people that being on the welfare doles the rest of their lives is not acceptable. They need to get a job. They need to contribute. They need to vote and hopefully vote the way we think. <laughs> but it's time to take back our nation. And, and being here tonight is a very good indication that that's what you are about. And certainly that is what I'm about. I would like to present uh, and, and ask a gentleman to come up and, and address, address you. Um, just this morning, he was, uh, I think you were dishing up uh, beans, weren't you? What I do? Uh, that's what he does. This is the Speaker of our House of Representatives down in Phoenix, a very important uh, uh, position within our state government. Also this morning, uh, the Speaker and I and my running mate and the, the President of the Senate and one other representative, we were serving food to people that are producing our agriculture here in Arizona. And these people are actually under attack. Do you ever see those commercials on TV where, where they show you those poor animals that are mistreated and things and it's the uh, Humane Society of America? Less than 1% of the money that you send to them actually goes into the animal shelters around the nation. The rest of the money they use to attack organizations like our, our cattle industry here in Arizona and our agricultural industry. So we were, we were actually helping out with that effort. We were serving food to the people that are serving food to us and growing growing agriculture here in Arizona. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce Andy Tobin, who is the Speaker of our House of Representatives down at the Capitol. Thank you, Bob. Bob's going to be down at the Capitol serving with us. And let me tell you why we need him. Where's Brenda? Brenda Barton, where are you? And Chester Crandall. Let me tell you something. We got folks under attack in this district because they're thinking, no, the, those extremists down at the Capitol, you want to know what those extremists did for the last three years? They balanced your budget three times. So we need Mr. Thorpe to come down there and make sure we keep that up. Can I ask all the veterans in the audience to please stand? Would you recognize these people? That's why I'm here tonight. That's why I'm here tonight. Now let me tell you, I was asked by Congressman Flake to be here because we're not giving up a Senate seat. And Flagstaff is going to vote for the next Senator of the United States from Arizona. His name is Jeff Flake. And we're going to need your help. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because President Obama bows to Saudi kings. And Ann Kirkpatrick and Mr. Carmoda bow to President Obama and, Aunt, and Ms. Pelosi. Our Senator, soon to be Senator Jeff Flake, will not bow. He will stand up there for rural Arizona and all of Arizona and remember who this man is. Remember who Jeff Flake is. Did you remember we, we talked about the cost for doing business? Remember we talked about the debt. Remember we talked about six trillion dollars. You know who owns the title? I killed earmarks in America. Jeff Flake, Jeff Flake owns that title. Yeah. That's who's running for Senate here. That's who needs your help. And I need your help too. Because there's a lot of other things that I know are in your heart. I know we're watching polling going on. You know what they can do with their polling? Yeah. They haven't seen you guys in a poll yet. So let me tell you what's going on. For the last four months in a row, last four months in a row in the state of Arizona, every legislative district increased above Democrats in every one in every month. They're not telling you that in the polls. There's reasons to be optimistic. Where's all our children who came here tonight? I saw a balloon leave. I was so disappointed. Some little girls walking around without one. This night's for you, too. This night's when we make the commitment to stand with Jeff Flake and stand with Mitt Romney and stand with Jonathan Payton and say we're taking our country back. You're not going to spend us anymore. Our children deserve the right and the chance that we had. Amen. That's why we're standing up here tonight. That's why you've come out. Let's go down that list just a little bit more because just this week, 
Just this week, the president finally figured out that it was a terrorist attack in Libya. Did you folks not know that about a week or so ago? I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Flake knows that. Jeff Flake is going to stand there with us. Jeff Flake is not going to be sitting down wondering what the press is telling him happened in some foreign land. And clearly, when we remove this president and we elect Mitt Romney, he won't have to because we'll be getting the truth of what's going on around the world. And somewhere along those lines, they'll remember to respect America again. And that's what we're here to do tonight, respect who we are. Now let me just talk about this socialist agenda just one last time, because it's really just draining me. In the state of Arizona, we put money into places that matter. You know, you hear this part, Republicans aren't, don't take care of their own, they don't take care of the little people. What you don't hear in the press, and probably especially in this press, is that the federal government cut out almost $40 million. Where's Anchor Patrick's note? Right there. $40 million out of Arizona's budget for the Temporary Assist to Needy Families Fund. $40 million. That hurts our neediest of families. Those are the people who need the cab fare to go to the hospital. Obama's administration cut that money. Your Republican legislature and your Republican governor put it back to take care of our needy families. Those are the people who are important. We know what's important. And I'll tell you, when you start talking about needy people, the seriously mentally ill, there's, there, we have responsibilities. We have responsibilities. It is not, it is not unrepublican to be helpful for those who had deep, deep cuts. We put money back. We put money back in K-3 education and the university system. And all this time, we balanced your budget. We put half a billion dollars almost in a rainy day fund, and we have about $400 million in surplus. The federal government can take a lesson from Arizona and Congressman Jeff Flake, because we don't have earmarks either. And you didn't send us down there to Phoenix to earmark. And you're not sending Chester Crandall and Brenda Barton and... and, and I can't remember. Yeah, Bob Thorpe, you're not sending them down to see me and help me without and bringing back pork. It doesn't happen here anymore because we know it's important and we value what our country meant to us. And we're not going down there for a career. We're going down there to serve you. And Jeff Flake, and God bless his family, I got fortunate enough to serve with his uncle, who is Speaker Flake, a few speakers before me, and that's a good and decent family who raised cattle in Arizona, who worked hard in Arizona, who put their kids to school in Arizona and gave, and gave to charity, and made our communities better. That's the people we want. That's the same people running for the state legislature. That's Jeff Flake. And by the way, that is Mitt Romney. That is Mitt Romney. So I share with you that when you see somebody coming into your town and they're telling you they're going to fix things, just vote with us. My name's Carmona. My name's Kirkpatrick. They're voting with Obama. They're voting with Pelosi. And they're burying our country in debt. And your commitment here tonight, this is the start. The Super Bowl has arrived. The politics of 2012 will never be surpassed in our lifetime. This is the year that we need to make sure we send the right people down to the legislature and to Washington. Last thought. This is our last weapon until next week. We have friends. We have family. We have neighbors who have moved and do not re-register to vote. Thousands of them. You want to know a quick way to get some votes for the Republican Party? Take one of these from us tonight and go find out if your neighbor's registered. Go find out if, you're, if your in-laws are registered when they moved here. Go find out if your workers are registered to vote. It's very easy to do, and if you ask them, they're going to vote for Jonathan Pate. They're going to vote for Chester Crandall. They're going to vote for Bob Thorpe and Brenda Barton. They're going to vote for Jeff Flake, and they are going to vote for Mitt Romney. 
My name's Andy Tobin. Thank you for giving me a few moments of your time tonight. I appreciate it.